Have you ever wondered how a tiny ant survives in the vast expanse of a forest, or how a towering tree gets its nutrients? Now let's embark on a fascinating journey into the intriguing world of ecosystems and habitats. Imagine for a moment a bustling city. The city is full of life with people going about their daily activities, all interconnected in some way. There are stores providing necessities, homes offering shelter and transportation systems linking one part of the city to another. Now, think of an ecosystem as this city, but instead of people, it's home to a diverse range of organisms, including plants and animals. An ecosystem is a complex, interconnected network where each organism, big or small, plays a crucial role. It's a place that provides these organisms with everything they need to survive and thrive. Just like how a city has different neighborhoods, an ecosystem is divided into habitats. A habitat is the specific area or environment in which an organism lives. It could be as vast as a forest or as tiny as a leaf's surface. A habitat provides the necessities of life for the organisms that call it home. It's like your house, providing you with food, water, shelter, and a space to live. In the same way, a forest habitat provides a deer with lush grass to eat, a river for water, trees for shelter, and ample space to roam around. But here's the catch. Just like each room in your house serves a different purpose, every habitat caters to specific needs of different organisms. The tree leaves provide a habitat for caterpillars, while the tree trunk may be a home for woodpeckers. Every organism finds a place in the ecosystem that perfectly suits its needs, just like how you find your favorite spot on the couch. So, as we dive deeper into this exciting world of ecosystems, remember, it's all about finding the right fit. Each organism, each habitat, and each ecosystem is a piece of a much larger puzzle. And when these pieces come together, they create the breathtakingly diverse and intricate world that we are a part of. Just like how your home provides you with everything you need to live, an ecosystem does the same for its residents. Imagine living in a neighborhood where everyone knows everyone and everything you do affects your neighbor. Sounds like a typical day in an ecosystem, doesn't it? Now let's dive deeper into the concept of community and nature. Remember our example of an ecosystem as a bustling city full of different people, all interacting, sharing resources, and coexisting. This is much like a community in nature, a dynamic group of various species all sharing a common habitat. In nature, you're not just dealing with your own species, you're also interacting with a myriad of other species, plants, animals, fungi, the works. This is a place where the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, takes on a whole new level. Everyone has a role to play, and every role impacts the survival and success of the community as a whole. However, just like in any community, there are factors that affect the ability of these species to survive and thrive. These could be environmental factors like temperature and rainfall, or biological factors like competition for resources and predation. It's a bit like high school, really. There's always something happening, and it all contributes to the bigger picture. Imagine this community as a social network. You have your influencers, the keystone species that have a disproportionate effect on the habitat. Then you've got your followers, the species that rely on others for survival. And of course, you've got your trolls, invasive species that disrupt the balance. Every interaction, every post, every like, and every share in this network influences the community's overall health and stability. So, when we talk about a community in nature, we are really talking about a complex interconnected web of relationships. Each organism, whether a mighty oak or a humble ant, plays a part in shaping and maintaining this community. And just like in our human communities, the actions of one can ripple out to affect many. Just like humans, plants and animals also depend on their community to thrive. So the next time you consider your place in your community, remember that you're not so different from a tree or a bear or a bee. We're all just trying to find our place in the world, one interaction at a time. Who's up for a game of dominoes? Because that's exactly how a food chain works. Picture this. You're standing at the start of a long line of dominoes. With a gentle nudge, you set off a chain reaction. Each domino represents a different organism in the food chain, and just like in our game, one organism's action directly affects the next one in the chain. At the start of our domino food chain, we have the producers. These green thumbs of the natural world, like plants and algae, have a very special job. They convert sunlight into energy through a process called photosynthesis. They're the ultimate self-starters, creating energy without needing to consume any other organisms. Next up in our domino line are the consumers. These guys are a little less self-sufficient. They rely on other organisms for their energy. Consumers can be categorized into three groups, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. 
Herbivores like rabbits graze on plants while carnivores such as lions feast on other animals. Omnivores like us humans enjoy a varied diet of both plants and animals. Then we have the decomposers, the last but certainly not the least important domino in our line. Think of decomposers as nature's recyclers. They break down dead plants and animals returning vital nutrients back into the soil. Without decomposers, the producers wouldn't have the nutrients they need to grow, and the whole food chain would come to a standstill. Just like in a game of dominoes, if one piece is removed or disturbed, it can impact the entire chain. For example, if a population of rabbits, our herbivores, suddenly decreases, the population of foxes, our carnivores who rely on them for food, might also decrease. Conversely, the plants that the rabbits usually munch on might start to overgrow. So there you have it. The food chain isn't just a list of who eats who. It's a complex, interconnected system, where each organism plays a crucial role. One thing's for sure, in this game of dominoes, everyone's a player. A food chain shows the intricate balance of nature. One toppled domino can set off a chain reaction. Has anyone tried untangling a mess of string? That's what understanding a food web is like. Imagine having a box full of different colored strings all tangled up. Each string represents a different species, and the knots and tangles show how they are interconnected through feeding relationships. This is your food web, a complex network of who eats whom in an ecosystem. Just like each string is necessary to hold the entire tangle together, each species in a food web plays a crucial role in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. The loss or addition of one species can have a ripple effect, impacting multiple other species in the food web. This is why understanding food webs is so essential in ecology. In the simplest terms, a food web illustrates how organisms, plants, animals, and microorganisms are connected through complex feeding relationships. It's like an elaborate buffet, but instead of your ant fighting over the last piece of pie with your cousin, it's a hawk swooping in for a mouse, or a spider snagging a fly. Unlike a food chain which shows a linear sequence of who eats whom, a food web is more intricate. It shows the multitude of food chains in an ecosystem all interlinked forming a web of life. It's the difference between playing tic-tac-toe and chess, both games but one has a lot more possibilities. Just like in a food chain in a food web, you'll find producers like plants and algae at the base. Remember that these are the life-giving green string that starts the tangle. They get their energy from the sun and are eaten by primary consumers, often herbivores. From there, the web expands to secondary and tertiary consumers, which are usually carnivores. And let's not forget the decomposers, nature's cleanup crew, breaking down dead material and returning nutrients to the soil. So, while it might be a bit of a headache to untangle, understanding the food web gives us priceless insight into the balance of life on our planet. It shows us the intricate interconnectedness of all living things, each one playing their part in the grand tapestry of life. Just like a tangled string, the food web is a complex yet fascinating part of our ecosystem. Ever tried wearing a coat in the desert or a swimsuit in the snow? Not a good idea, right? That's what we'll explore next. Now imagine you're a plant or an animal and you can't change your outfit to suit your environment. Well, you'd better hope you've got some pretty cool adaptations to help you survive. Let's take the cactus, for instance. This prickly character doesn't just wear those spikes for style, they're actually modified leaves that reduce water loss and deter hungry herbivores looking for a juicy snack. And its thick waxy skin, that's its desert-ready attire, equipped to retain every precious drop of water it can get. Talk about dressing for the occasion, or consider the arctic fox, whose snowy white coat isn't just a winter fashion statement, it's an essential survival gear that provides excellent camouflage against the snow, making it both a stealthy predator and a sneaky prey. And when the seasons change, so does its wardrobe, shifting to a brown color that's perfect for a summer getaway. And let's not forget about our friends underwater. Consider the cuttlefish, the master of disguise. This marine maestro can change its color and even its texture to blend into its surroundings, making it the ultimate underwater chameleon. It's like wearing a camo suit that adjusts to every environment. Now that's what I call adaptive fashion. So, you see, every organism has its own unique set of adaptations, their own survival attire, if you will, that allows them to thrive in their specific habitats. It's not just about looking good. Although, let's be honest, some of these guys are seriously rocking their look. It's about surviving and thriving in the wild, wild world of nature. So, the next time you find yourself bundled up in a coat in the middle of winter or donning a swimsuit for a beach vacation, remember you're not so different from the cactus or the arctic fox. You're just adapting to your environment, just like them. 
Nature, in its wisdom, has given each organism the perfect attire to survive. Ever been to a party that's so packed you can barely move? Imagine that's how a habitat feels when it's too crowded. Just like your favorite party venue, every habitat has a maximum capacity, a limit to how many organisms it can support. This is what we call the carrying capacity. Now let's delve deeper into this. Imagine a habitat as a buffet table at a party. The buffet table can only hold so much food, and once it's gone, it's gone. Similarly, a habitat provides a certain amount of resources like food, water, and space. If too many organisms show up to the party, I mean, move into the habitat, these resources can run out. But nature, being the fantastic party host it is, has a way to keep things under control. If a habitat starts to get too crowded, competition increases. It's like musical chairs, but instead of chairs, it's food, water, and space at stake. The organisms that can't keep up with the competition might have to leave the party early, reducing the population and bringing things back into balance. Sometimes, though, things get out of hand. If too many organisms are taking more than their fair share, the habitat can become damaged. This is like those wild parties where the house gets trashed and no one wants to have a party there anymore. When habitats get damaged, they can't support as many organisms, and the carrying capacity decreases. It's also worth noting that carrying capacity isn't a fixed number. It can change based on factors like availability of resources, predation, and changes in the environment. It's like how your party might be able to support more guests. If you have more food or a bigger venue, like a party host, nature has its limits too. And it's our responsibility to respect those limits. So we've journeyed through ecosystems, peeked into food chains and even attended a party in nature. What have we learned? Firstly, we discovered that habitats are like nature's cities, providing organisms with everything they need to survive, from food and water to a place to call home. Whether it's a lush rainforest or a bustling park, every habitat plays a crucial role in supporting life. Next, we stepped into the world of communities in nature. These are groups of interacting species sharing a common habitat. Just like a neighborhood, each member has a role to play, from the busy bees pollinating flowers to the vigilant owls keeping the rodent population in check. Then we delved into the food chain where we observed nature's dining table. We classified organisms into producers, consumers, and decomposers. Remember the producers are the green chefs, the consumers are the eager eaters, and the decomposers are like the cleanup crew, breaking down the leftovers. We also unraveled the food web, a complex network of who eats who. It's like a social network for animals, but instead of sharing selfies, they're sharing meals. And just like on social media, every interaction matters. We also explored the amazing structural adaptations of plants and animals. From the camel's hump to the cactus's spines, these adaptations are nature's way of saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Finally, we learned that every habitat has a limit to how many organisms it can support. It's like a party. If too many guests show up, there won't be enough food or space for everyone. Remember, we're all part of this amazing web of life. Let's do our part to keep it thriving. Let's keep learning, exploring, and working to protect our wonderful world. After all, we're not just inhabitants of Earth, we're its caretakers too.